Right, a uh, teensy little video on urea formation. Uh, it's pretty straightforward this. If you want to look into it in any kind of depth, um, you know, be my guest. But um, I'm going to keep it fairly straightforward and, and the kind of things that you'd need on the exam. So, um, it all links back to proteins, which as we know are a polymer of amino acids. And depending on, on your body size, there's a rough guide. Um, however much you weigh in kilograms, um, you probably need about half of that maybe per day in grams of protein. So I know somebody who weighs 90 kilograms would probably need about 45 grams of protein a day, very roughly speaking. Um, assuming that you're not doing something like bodybuilding or something, um, in which case obviously you need quite a bit more. But the value given in the book is, is somewhere between 40 and 60 grams per day, depending on, on uh, the individual. The problem with this is that um, if you take more than this in, um, we can't actually store it. So any excess amino acids that come from the breakdown of protein, we can't store them. And an amino acid, if we just draw out, um, there's our amine group, there's our carboxyl group, um, and then of course we've got the, the functional R group, there's our basic amino acid. This amine group here, um, it turns out, is, is actually quite toxic. And so we, we don't want this... Um, floating around in our body or in our, our uh, fluids. So it's all about getting rid of this. So what your urea is really is the um, removal of nitrogenous um, material, this amine group from broken down uh, amino acids. So this is going to occur um, in the liver. And our first step then is deamination, which really means removing the amine group. How is it done? Well, if we take that amino acid there, NH2C, there's our HCWH, and we take some oxygen, so we oxidize this, it is converted into. So there's our C still. We've broken off the amine group, we've got rid of that. We've still got the R group sitting on the top. We're going to add an oxygen on here. And get my colours wrong. We've still got the, the carboxyl group on there. And now we've got NH3. Now, if you actually add this up, um, the, the, the numbers don't quite work out because we've only got one option there and yet we've put two options in. So, really, what we should do is that should be two lots of that plus one oxygen molecule. Okay, in your books it doesn't balance the, the equation. It doesn't matter too much, someone's going to panic about that. But just in case you're the kind of person who sits there and says, where's that extra oxygen gone? Well, we just have two amino acids. Okay, So we'd end up with, of course, two watts of all that. Okay? Or, oh, well, should do it like that really, shouldn't I? There we go, it's better. Um, so we've removed it. This here is called a keto acid. And lots of hydrogen still knocking around in here. This can be fed into uh, a respiratory process and, and used it as a, a respiratory substrate so we can get um, release energy from that. But the key bit here is we've now removed this um, ammonia. Okay. Now, ammonia is very soluble and it's also very, very toxic. So it's not a good thing to have floating around in the body. Okay, cool. So the next stitch we come to is the ornithine cycle. This was actually discovered by um, Krebs, Hans Krebs, who of course you'll know from Krebs cycle. He actually discovered this one first. This was his first uh, discovery. What the ornithine cycle does is it converts our ammonia into a safer form. So it's going to convert, remember we've got two lots of um, ammonia from our original deamination. And th again, it's one of these things where the actual reaction is a, well, a lot more complicated than what we're showing, but this is the summary of it. So our soluble ammonia um, plus carbon dioxide and urea is, is a rather nice molecule. If we look at it like this. If we, if you look at it structurally, what you have is um, two 
amine group like this, with the carbon, and then an oxygen. So it's quite a nice little symmetrical molecule. Can't perhaps tell if you just look at it like that, but it's, it's quite a pleasant, uh, pleasant symmetry to it. So that is the summary of the ornithine cycle, ammonia plus carbon dioxide. Now, if you look into it more um, in, in more detail, you'll see, for example, that it's not really carbon dioxide, it's um, hydrogen carbonate, HCO, 3 minus that's coming in here, but it doesn't matter, It's this is the bit that you can remember, this formula. You do, however, let me get a bit of space up here, let's do it here, why not? It's worth having in your head this ornithine cycle, so I'm just going to try and summarise this. There are three um, molecules to remember, and I can't really think of an easy way to remember them. Um, ornithine is the first one, across citrulline and, uh, and arginine and I've tried to think of some kind of mnemonic for these and I was thinking of citrus and argentina and bird watching on the fold uh, I can't quite particularly think of an easy way to remember it's OCA you know come up with your own mnemonic for it if you like so this is what's happening again it's a bit like Krebs cycle we put these chemicals in what's really happening is um, molecules are being added to these and taken off them and this is just a summary of what's going on but it's this is all we need to know for, for your exam so we, we feed in ammonia it goes in and we also feed in some carbon dioxide at this point so co2 and water comes out so co2 in Ammonia, CO2 in, water comes out. Very, very similar on the next step is our second ammonia. Remember there were two, um, two ammonia molecules went in. Here's the second one coming in. And again we get water coming out. And the third one, water going in. And urea coming out. Okay. So, if you can remember, ornithine, citrulline, arginine, and then think, ammonia goes in the first two, water comes out the first two, carbon dioxide goes in on the first one, and water goes in on the last one. That doesn't sound very easy, does it? There's no quite, uh, there's no simple method, I'm afraid, for remembering. It's just one you're going to have to uh, graft through.